Hello YouTube and welcome to this video where we're going to be looking at what's new in Ionic 5. So about two weeks ago on February 11, 2020, Ionic announced the release of a new version, Ionic 5. Now I know you're probably thinking, what, wait, already? Um, just last year, at the beginning of last year, they released Ionic 4, which was a major upgrade from Ionic 3. And barely a year later, we have yet another version. But for it's not, this one is not as big a jump as Ionic 4, and the upgrade is actually going to be pretty easy. So if you look at the description, you can see various timestamps for the different new features that I'm going to be talking about. If you're interested in hearing just about one particular feature, you can skip ahead in the video. So without further ado, let's move forward. But before we do, remember to like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe and click the bell icon so that you can get notifications each time I upload a new video. So Ionic 5 comes with a number of uh, new features. First, there is the Custom Animations API. We have revamped Ionicons. There are design updates to reflect the changes in iOS 13. And we have some slightly different default colors. We have new starter design templates and improvements to component customizations. Now, all these changes apply to Ionic Core, meaning that they apply across the board, whether you're using Ionic with Angular, React, or Vue, which is still in beta at the time of recording, or if you're using Ionic with plain HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So the change is only slight from version 4. Um, Ionic also moved into semantic versioning. They talk about this in this paragraph here. So since they follow semantic versioning, they've committed to publish a major release when incompatible API changes are introduced. So that means that um, basically if they were still with the old versioning system, this might very well have been Ionic 4.x. But because they've committed to publishing uh, a new version each time there's changes in the API that's breaking changes, that means that the version number had to be bumped up. So the too long didn't read is that upgrading from Ionic 4 will be easy, much easier than upgrading from Ionic 3 to Ionic 4, or the nightmare that was upgrading from version 1 to version 2. For those of you who've been with Ionic for long enough to know the difference. So the first new feature of Ionic 5 that we're going to be looking at is a new animations API that is open source that allows developers to build framework independent and performant animations. Prior to this change, we relied on animations from within the framework, such as Angular animations, or we relied on third-party animation libraries like animate.css. So the new Ionic Animations API is going to allow us to build animations that are independent of the framework. This means that they're going to be working across the board, whether you are using Ionic with Angular or with Vue or React. So if I scroll down here, you, so you can see here, this is the syntax that is used for the animation API. And as you can see, it's very clean and very simple. So this is going to make it much easier to build animations in Ionic. What it also means is since that the animations will apply regardless of the framework that is being used, it means that if you're looking at an Angular tutorial, for example, an Ionic Angular tutorial, you can then follow that same tutorial and use those same techniques with your React application or with your Vue application or whatever you have chosen uh, your framework of choice. So that is absolutely amazing. We can see here we can actually chain animations 
as is demonstrated here and in uh, for this part of the overview of Ionic 5 features, I'm looking at the um, Ionic Animations blog post. And as you can see here, one of the biggest benefits to Ionic's animations is that they are amazingly performant in terms of frames per second, uh, main thread processing, average CPU usage, and all those uh, great metrics. You can see here on some benchmarks, Ionic is outperforming Velocity, GSAP, and Anime.js on pretty much every uh, benchmark category there is. You can see there it totally blows Anime.js and Velocity out of the water in terms of frames per second and beats everyone by a country mile in terms of CPU usage. So this is going to be absolutely amazing for uh, building animations on Ionic. The next new feature that we're going to look at is in terms of Ionicons. So Ionic 5 ships with the latest version of their free and open source icon library. So it brings with it updated Ionicons and this update also includes an all new icon set. And as you can see, and as you can see on the screen here, we have this skull icon, which wasn't in the previous version. The snowflake, I believe, is also new and lots more others. And we also have the Ionicons in light and dark mode versions. Icons will no longer automatically switch between the different versions depending on your platform. That means that you will need to set the iOS or material design properties. With version 4 and below, it automatically uh, changed according to the platform. A handful will still automatically switch, such as the menu and back buttons, as well as an item detail icon. I suppose that was done because uh, you always, almost always have a menu and back button in your application. So it would have been a bit more work to have to change that manually. Um, we also have the icon font that has been removed from Ionicons, but it does still contain an SVG sprite if loading all icons on the same page is needed. We also have some icons that have been renamed and for a full list of all the icons that were removed or renamed, you can see the Ionic changelog document in the link that is showing on your screen. Next, we're looking at the new set of colors in Ionic 5. So the default colors have been updated. If your app was created using the Angular or React starter templates, this is your Ionic 4 app, you'll need to navigate to the themes slash variables.scss file and manually update the colors. Otherwise, if you created your app from scratch, then the, ala then the colors will update automatically when you update your Ionic CLI. Otherwise, if you created your app from scratch, then the colors will automatically be updated when you update from Ionic 4 to Ionic 5. Now the default colors, as you can see on the screen, also come with a slightly different set of default colors that have been optimized for dark mode. So you can see that the primary, for example, in dark mode here is a little different from primary in light mode. The other new feature and which is really exciting in my opinion is the redesigned starter templates. So with lots of UI changes in version 5, the Ionic team decided that it was time to refresh the design of their starter templates. And they've incorporated all of the UI changes that ship with Ionic 5 and in addition They've also added specific starter templates for dark mode. 
so that you don't have to implement dark mode yourself, which saves you a whole lot of time because it ships right out of the box. So if we scroll up here, here's the blank starter template in light mode and dark mode. We have the side menu template, the tabs template, and here we have a completely new starter template, which is called the list starter template. It showcases how you can implement a Gmail inbox like list in your application. So a common complaint from the community has been that Ionic components are not very easy to customize. This is mainly because of a lack of CSS variables or other way of styling inner elements within components. Also, components are scoped and their Ionic styles would take precedence over custom styles. So to remedy this, some scoped components were converted to using a shadow DOM while more CSS variables were added. And a shadow DOM basically is just a mini DOM that only applies inside that particular component, meaning that its styles will be encapsulated to the component only. And some of these components that were converted to using the shadow DOM are, as we can see here, the back button, the card, the segment, and split pane. So the back button, split pane, segment, and card components now feature a shadow DOM so that their styles are completely encapsulated and don't pollute other components. This means that you can style elements within these components without affecting other components that also have the same uh, element names or style class names. So an exciting feature for Ionic Angular developers is that Ionic 5 will fully support Ivy, which is Angular's new renderer. Ivy enables applications to only require pieces of the renderer that they actually need instead of the whole thing. This means that our final output will be much smaller, which is better for load performance. So the largest change that is introduced with Ionic 5 is to the iOS user interface components. This has been necessitated by changes introduced by Apple in iOS 13. We have, for example, here the segment, which has changed from a filled and unfilled background to a sliding indicator. In addition, there is a new gesture to drag the indicator from one side to the next. We have our headers. We have a collapsible header. In version 5, Ionic now supports collapsible headers and title components through new properties that can be added to the components. This results in the effect that you can see on the animation in your screen below. Instead of displaying a model that covers the entire screen and requires the user to tap a button to close it, it will now display a model that is inset with the page behind it pushed back. This update also includes a gesture to drag the model down in order to close it. We also have the side menu overlay. In prior versions of iOS, the side menu used a reveal type menu, which pushed the main content over to reveal the menu. The new iOS design features a menu that will overlay the content with an updated animation. No changes to your code are needed. No changes to your code need to be made to take advantage of this new feature. Now with pull to refresh, the icon in iOS has been updated in native applications to be above a header with a large title. In addition to that, as you pull down on the content, the spinner tick marks will gradually be displayed until the content is pulled down enough 
to where all the ticks are seen, and then it will begin to rotate. So this is a very subtle but a very nice and sleek change to this UI element. And then finally, the list header. The list header now has a lines property, which makes it possible to add a border to the list header, matching the latest design introduced in iOS 13. So there are lots of great features that make updating to Ionic 5 very worthwhile. Thank you for watching this video. Join me in the following tutorials where we're going to do a deep dive into Ionic 5 and start creating some applications. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, click on the bell icon so that you can get notifications of new tutorials.